Hello everybody and welcome to the fourth video in our series of videos on the Industrial Revolution. As always, we begin with our learning outcomes. So by the end of this presentation, you guys should know about the living conditions in the slums and some of the diseases associated with it. Second, you guys should know some reforms that were brought in to improve living conditions and some of those key reformers. And finally, you guys should know two different types of economic theories that emerged in the Industrial Revolution in response to capitalism. Now, we already talked about the how the Industrial Revolution was a social revolution that changed society, where we moved from an agrarian or agriculturally based society to a more urban, uh, industrialized society. So today, we will look at some of the consequences of that. There is no other event in modern European history that has had bigger consequences. Millions of people moved from the countryside to the cities looking for work as traditional work on farms and in cottage industries were erased with the agricultural and textile revolutions. Uh, with such a massive influx of people, there was massive problems with overcrowding. There wasn't enough houses or facilities in the cities to deal with this massive amount of people arriving. And people lived in some horrific conditions. Uh, the water quality was very poor, there was no proper sanitation, um, there were no proper sewers, uh, so human waste would sometimes be dumped in the river or in open drains. Um, you could have a family of 10 or 15 people living in just one room. Um, these conditions uh, primarily existed in these places that were called slums. These, these areas were known as slums. Uh, the conditions led to many health problems uh, with people getting stuff like typhoid and cholera from the bad drinking water. In fact, in 1832, there was a massive cholera outbreak that killed 56,000 people alone. Um, due to poor diets and damp living conditions, TB spread and diseases like smallpox uh, spread like wildfire in these cramped conditions. So this human misery it led to people trying to protect these vulnerable people so in 1825 trade unions were finally made legal now a trade union uh was were worker groups or organizations uh, from a particular industry that are formed to protect and further their rights and interests trade unions didn't really get any power until 1875 when they were given the right to go on strike but the fact that they were getting organized in 1825 was a big step in the 1930s also there was an organization called the Chartists uh, who tried to get more rights for workers and to get representation for the workers in Parliament uh, but they were stopped by the wealthy landowners in Parliament. However in 1833 um, there was some reform brought in through Parliament. Um, they passed Factories Acts and they stated that children under the age of nine years of age uh, couldn't work in the factories. Nine to 13 year olds were to work no more than nine hours a day. No children were to work at night. All children were to receive two hours of schooling a day. And there would be factory inspectors would be used to enforce these laws as well. In uh, 1842, the Mines Act came and we looked at how horrible life was in the mines in the last video. And this stated that children under 10 and women weren't allowed to work in these underground mines. The government were forced to take further actions to try and improve the conditions of people after uh, Edwin Chadwick published the sanitary conditions of the labouring population in 1842. And this report showed how horrific their living conditions were. Uh, and the government passed these things called the Government Health Act in 1848. Further health acts would follow, but the first big one was in 1848. Um, and this, uh, with this, they set up boards of health to try to improve the public health. Now, before these reforms, some factory owners actually took it upon themselves to try and improve conditions. Uh, probably the most famous of these was a Welsh man known as Robert Owen. Owen had a factory in, uh, he took over a factory in New Lanark in Scotland in 1800. And he brought in a program of social uh, and educational reform. He set up creches for mothers, he gave free education for all children, he gave universal health care for his workers, which is something that a lot of people still don't even have to this day, um, and he gave night classes for his workers also. Now his profits soared even though he had the added expenses of better living conditions for his workers. And because of this, um, Robert Owen is really seen as, as, as the father of British socialism as someone who brought um, 
uh, put people ahead of the economics of the country. So socialism can be defined as uh, an economic theory that really it runs opposite to capitalism. To know what that means, we have to know what capitalism is. So capitalism puts an emphasis on private individuals setting up businesses. It states that if people pursue their own self-interests, society would become wealthier and ultimately improve uh, society. And by encouraging people to be motivated by their own self-interests, this would bring about the, the changes and the improvements that were needed. Um, there, we still live in a, a capitalist society uh, where we, we go by these ideals that um, the money and the motivation from this system will lead to further improvements. Um, however, socialism believed that these ideas uh, lead to the exploitation of workers uh, and wanted greater government kind of control of businesses. Now, two socialist, um, these socialist ideas would be taken further by two German thinkers in the mid-1800s. Uh, they lived in Britain at various points uh, in their lives. Uh, these guys had very interesting lives. They were involved in revolutions in Germany in 1848. Um, but they were called Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels. Um, and they uh, proposed a system called communism, where the workers would own the factories instead of the rich employers. They said, the, they said that the workers would eventually revolt and they would own and run these factories. Um, this system was known as communism, and this would become a huge threat to capitalism in the 20th century. So that brings us to the end of our presentation. So you guys should now know about living conditions in the slums and some of the diseases associated with it. You guys should know, know some reforms that were brought in to improve living conditions and some of the key reformers. And finally, you guys should know two different types of economic theories, socialism and communism, that emerged in the Industrial Revolution in response to capitalism. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys got something good from this video.